In November, I got word that the Pentagon was thinking about spending taxpayer dollars to facilitate elective abortions. This goes beyond what the law, which was passed here, the law allows. Now, I warned Secretary Austin that if he did this and changed this, I would put a hold on his highest level nominees. Secretary Austin went through with the policy anyway in February of this year. So I am keeping my word. The senator is blocking 184 top military promotions because he disagrees with the Department of Defense policy to help service members and their families access needed health care, specifically to travel to access abortion care. This week, many of us watched a video that has gone viral online of a young Navy Lieutenant JG. I have a lot of problems with this video. The coolest thing I did on board was to be able to participate in a LGBTQ spoken word night and I was able to read a poem that I wrote to the whole ship. And that was probably the culmination of the whole deployment. I hope we train our officers to prioritize their sailors, not themselves. That level of trust that a commanding officer develops across that unit has to be grounded on dignity and respect. And so if that officer can lawfully join the United States Navy, is willing to serve and willing to take the same oath that you and I took to, to put their life on the line, then I'm proud to serve aside them. And so let me just say this one more time because I keep getting asked the same question over and over again. I will keep my hold, I will keep it on until the Pentagon follows the law or changes the law. It's that simple. And we have a single senator, Senator Tuberville, who is holding and blocking 250 military promotions right now, the head of the Marine Corps, the head of the Army, the head of the Navy, because he objects to the fact that a woman might get a paid bus ticket to get an abortion. If blocking these nominations continues, we will have no chairman of the Joint Chiefs, no commandant of the Marine Corps for the first time in 134 years, no Army Chief of Staff, and his colleagues who to, claim to care about national security are letting him get away with it. 46% of active duty service women are in stationed in states where, that now either ban or very severely restrict abortion. They have no choice, they are based there. They have signed up to serve their country, they have been put on a base in Texas or in Alabama. That is not their choice, that is their duty. But the authors of these bills are not set on just letting the reversal of Roe sit and having states make their own decisions. The authors of these amendments are from Alabama and Texas, which ban abortion, including in the role of rape or incest. Why is this important? It's important because we need to hear what people are telling us. They are telling us that they will not stop with the reversal of Roe that happened a year ago. They will not stop when states like Michigan organize to make sure we have protections for women who want abortions. They want every single American, starting with our service members, to live under the same rules that they choose in their states. We need to hear what they are telling us and act accordingly. They are choosing politics over our women in uniform, choosing politics in the Senate over our national security. So please, I have never in my life as someone who served in the CIA, who served in the Pentagon, thought about voting against this bill. I believe it, I believe in it. It's about paying our military and getting them what they need. Please keep your culture war baggage out of national security. Thank you. Right now, the Senator from Alabama has imposed a hold on all, every single senior military nomination and promotion. That means that one senator is personally standing in the way of promotions for 184 of our top level military leaders. One senator is holding up pay raises for men and women in uniform. One senator is blocking key senior military leaders from taking their posts. One senator is jeopardizing America's national security. He is worried that a service member might, might be seeking an abortion for themselves or for a family member. And he doesn't think the Department of Defense should participate in that in any way. Fine. The senator from Alabama can advocate for a bill to invade the medical privacy of every single service member. He can advocate for a bill that requires every commanding officer 
to do what no private employer can do, and that is to rifle through a service member's personal medical information. The senator from Alabama can seek to change federal law so that a commanding officer interrogates a service member with questions like, do you need time off because you're having trouble getting pregnant? Has your wife had a miscarriage? How many weeks pregnant are you? Was your daughter raped? These are not questions that commanding officers want to ask, nor should they be authorized or required to ask them. Like me, the senator from Alabama serves on the Senate Armed Services Committee. And as a consequence, he has many more opportunities than most senators to influence DOD policy. He has many more opportunities to question witnesses, many more opportunities to receive briefings, and many more opportunities to influence the annual defense bill that Congress passes every single year to govern Pentagon operations. He has many opportunities that do not actively threaten our national security. He has not raised any individual objections to the 184 service members whose promotions are now held up in the Senate. And he has not raised any objections to the process by which these men and women were vetted and nominated. The senator from Alabama and I fundamentally disagree on the issue of abortion. We disagree on Department of Defense policies. But all of us should be able to agree that a blockade of the promotion of every single senior member of our nation's military creates unacceptable risks to our national security. And it needs to stop right now. In a moment, I'll be asking the Senate to confirm calendar number 94. Collectively, these 37 nominees in calendar number 94 have served in the Army for nearly a thousand years. This list includes a commanding officer stationed in South Korea, the head of plans for Central Command, and the deputy chief of staff in the fight against ISIS. The list also includes the Deputy Provost Marshal General for the Office of the Provost Marshal General, which is responsible for all, all of the Army's policing functions. There's also a graduate of Auburn University where the Senator from Alabama was once head coach. And I'm sure that this service member never expected that his promotion would be blocked by the Senator from Alabama. Mr. President, I renew my request with respect to calendar number 94.